What's going on guys? At the request of a few of you that have asked me to look at the 4090 and 7900 XDX with the new Starfield update, I decided to make a video about it with a beta update, obviously. And I also made a similar video a few months ago when the game first came out comparing the two GPUs. And we found out that the 4090 was 15% or so ahead at 4K native, like in this area here. But there was also other areas where they were kind of evenly matched like in this area here. So the point of this video will be to take another look with a beta update to see if the performance has widened or what's going on with the current beta update. And we're going to look at a few different areas. It's going to be a few different life planets. So demanding GPU demanding areas. And then lastly, we're also going to check out Neon City. I will link my old video in the description below if you want to look at it. So before we start, I wanted to go over something real quick, since I'm using two different PCs to do this, where my GPUs are, and it's going to be different CPUs, we want to make sure that in the GPU comparison, the CPU does not become the bottleneck. And there's a couple of steps that we can take to ensure that. So let's go check out the settings right now on the game and make sure that our CPU has plenty of room to spare so that we don't run into any bottlenecks. Okay, so now we're running the game at 4K native with all settings maxed out. This is how this benchmark is going to be. And we're going to check out see what we get for a performance. Now, we will be able to see that our GPU utilization is at 100% pulling 400 watts, which is what this the 7900XX pulls normally when it's flat out. And we're also getting around 65 FPS. This is at 4K native. Now, I know for a fact that there is no CPU limitations in this case, but we're going to take an extra step just to show that and for the sake of transparency and that extra step will be to turn on fsr and set the resolution scale to 50 percent so that's fsr performance so we're essentially running the game at 1080p right now and as you can clearly see we went from 65 fps to 105 so the 5900x is able to deliver at least 105 fps and as you can see, we're still GPU bound at 100% pulling 400 watts. So the 5900X is well more than enough for the 7900XDX, as is the 7800X3D for the 4090. So, so basically, both CPUs are going to be more than enough to keep both GPUs well fed with frames so that they're GPU bound throughout this whole comparison, which is what you want on a GPU comparison. Let's jump into the comparison now. The first planet we're going to take a look at is planet Nosoi. And a few things to keep in mind here is that this game, even though I've loaded the same save file and it's supposed to be same uh, time of day, same exact location, is that it will randomly generate clouds or weather effects. So it might look hazy on another. And then because the global illumination in Starfield is actually very impressive, I quite like it, is that that will affect the lighting and even the colors of how it looks. But it's supposed to be the same area. That's kind of what's happening here. So it's quite common in Starfield when you're doing side-by-side -side comparisons to, for it to look a little bit different. So that's not out of the ordinary. Then you also have differences in codec when using the GPUs to record with the GPU software, essentially. So NVIDIA Shadowplay and Radeon Relive. There's also a few differences in color there when you're recording. But if I was to use a capture card, they would essentially look the same. So that's kind of what's happening here. But looking at the performance here, I'm actually seeing quite a quite uh, the 4090 has had some v very noticeable improvements in uh, the performance gain. Actually, this is huge. It's more than I've seen previously. So this update seems to have optimized for NVIDIA quite a lot, actually. Um, I wonder how the other areas will look because believe it or not guys I'm actually looking at these side by side and the differences in performance while editing the video essentially that's kind of so I'm kind of discovering it and letting you know exactly uh, what I see as I'm seeing it for the first time right so yeah this is some very nice improvements here we're essentially seeing around 30% performance difference between the 7900 XTX and the 4090 in favor of the 4090. Anyway, let's move on to another area. So this next area here is actually Murphid 4 Frozen Hills, I believe it's called. It's on the Southern Hemisphere. This is actually my two month old video and I've actually come and tested the same exact area and here we had a difference of around 20% between the 7900 XDX and 4090 if you look at the averages. So let's see what it is now. 
now we're back at the current beta update performance of the game and I've essentially chosen the same it's I know it's the same landing site and I'm pretty sure it's very close to the same run obviously it's kind of hard to, to do the same exact run but it's very very close should be very close this should be that same frozen lake that I ran through on the previous video but this will essentially let us see what the performance gain differences are from two months ago essentially the release version of the game up until now and I made this run a little bit longer but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of skip and cut through so that we kind of get through it faster so we can move on to the next planet which is going to be the same exact planet but we're gonna look at a very dense forest which is should be one of the most demanding um, zones in this game that I've run across is these heavy thick forests whereas these frozen areas tend to be a little bit less demanding but anyway so if we look at the averages again here, we're seeing around a 28% uh, advantage, maybe 30 sometimes, depending. So, yeah, we've seen about a gain of a 8 to 10%. You know, it's not like a very thorough testing, but just, you know, kind of like apples to apples from two months ago now. So, yeah, but this has made some uh, pretty nice improvements on, uh, on GeForce GPUs. Let's go into the next area. Let's check out that dense, heavy forest. So this here is that same planet that we were at with the frozen waste, but this is a uh, deciduous forest, I think, or hills, I forget, but it's essentially a much more demanding area. And uh, I kind of made a mistake here because I started going the wrong way on the 4090, but it's essentially the same area, same type of performance. Here the differences are not as wide actually. Here we're seeing around a 20% difference, so it can depend on the area. Um, and also the type of um, environment a little bit uh, so the performance can vary but the the cool thing is that whether it's a 7900 XCX or 4090 you can get a native 4k 60 experience here granted you have a decent CPU for the more uh, demanding areas like the cities but for the most part the other areas are mostly GPU dependent for the most part so yeah both GPUs are able to deliver well uh, a very steady 4k 60 experience what we're gonna do now is uh, might as well jump on neon I have another area that I did but it's more or less very comparable performance so uh, why don't we go to neon city and uh, end the video there now we're in neon so this will be our last area we check and since the cities in this game are CPU demanding I want to do another check to make sure the 5900x will not be uh, a holding back factor for the 7900 XTX so we're gonna do the same thing we're gonna go FSR to 50% whereas before we were getting around 70 FPS we can see that the 5900 X is able to provide top 100 FPS and we're now CPU bound we can see GPU utilization is below 100% but the 5900 X is good for at least 100 105 FPS and at 4k native maxed out we are running at around 70 FPS because we are bound by the 7900XDX. Now, out of curiosity, let's do the same thing for the 4090 and 7800X3D. So we can, we're able to get around 80 FPS at 4K native. Let's go ahead and drop FSR to 50% with the 7800X3D and see where that uh, ends up. So we're going to do the same thing here, FSR to 50%. So it's rendering at 1080p. And we're able to get around 140 FPS. So the 5900X was hitting around 100, 105. 7800X 3D is hitting around 138. Now the 4090 reads as though it's still the limiting factor. So maybe the 7800X 3D can go a little bit higher. But the 4090 is a little harder to read. Because it always says around 98% anyway. You kind of have to look at the um, uh, power draw as well. But that's besides the point. The point is that... The 5900X is not holding back the 7900XDX. So with that said, let's compare the two GPUs and check out the differences. Now that we've done our CPU check, we can see what the performance differences are in Neon City, which is actually a bit interesting because I've never actually tested Neon City. I've done a bunch of uh, New Atlantis, and I think I did a video in uh, Aquila City, I believe. I, I think it was check and frame generation. Speaking of which, I, I will probably take a look at that in a separate video. I've just been kind of busy lately, but I might do a check on Bethesda's implementation of DLSS and frame gen versus the modders uh, implementation, which was actually quite good. 
but anyway, so yeah, what we're seeing here is around 20% difference in Neon City. What's interesting is that once we make it into the club, the 4090 advantage will actually go up to closer to 30%. So yeah, it can kind of differ. It's in some areas, the 4090s tends to break away even more, and in other areas, the 7900 XDX will begin to catch up a little bit. But what we're seeing is around 20 to 30% difference between the two, which is expected. Well guys, I think it's come time to my conclusion and basically the conclusion that I've come to is that the performance difference between the 7900 XTX and the 4090 has become wider than it was before, whereas before it was around 10 to 20% sometimes uh, and other times the 7900 XTX was pretty much almost neck and neck with the 4090. Right now we've seen the 4090s always ahead um, and it's between 20 to 30 percent uh, or so i never tested out the outer space because that is not a very demanding area so it's kind of not worth it i wanted to test the most gpu heavy areas that was why i chose the life planets with a lot of forests and foliage and that sort of thing and also neon city so yeah if you guys did like this comparison you can leave a like if you think it deserves it and if you want to see more content like this you can subscribe if you want and uh, I want to thank you for watching this video and if you have any suggestions for me or any sort of requests feel free to leave them below I always like to read your guys' comments and uh, like to hear the suggestions you guys have for me and uh, thanks for watching my video and I hope you have a great rest of the weekend thank you